Okay, good morning, everyone. Today is our uh, uh, third lecture uh, for robot motion planning. And uh, last meeting, we finished already the four kinematics and inverse kinematics of planar robots. Planar robots meaning the, the, we consider only robots that have uh, rotational joints. And planar robots meaning they move in a plane, X, Y, Z, I mean, X, Y plane, or maybe moving on a table or just, uh, you know, moving on a wall. Now, there's no there's no third dimension where they are moving. And so we emphasize this because it is important for the students to understand forward kinematics and inverse kinematics in the sense of the space where it is easier to imagine. I don't want to go into that for the inverse kinematics on the 3D space immediately because it will make the student not, not imagine things properly. But when you have, oh, bring bright nature. Okay. When you have, uh, when you have your uh, already a background on the planar robots and we discuss forward and inverse kinematics, you'll have a better idea of what's going on. I want you to have that understanding before we move into the 3D space, because when we move into 3D space, imagining will be very, very difficult. Okay? So I want you to, I want to bring uh, your attention to the, the uh, linearity of the system, which is very critical in, in, this, in this course. So let me share my screen. Okay, and you will. So let me go to the uh, linearity of the system. This one. So uh, the last meeting, I I, uh, I promised that we will discuss uh, things. What are linear systems? What are linear things, and why do we say that the forward kinematics is not linear? Okay. So here, I, it just a very simple definition so that we won't confuse ourselves too much. Uh, linear systems are systems of equations in which variable are never multiplied with each other, but only constants and then sum up. It's a very rough uh, definition of a linear system. And so in this case here, we, we are saying that, for example, uh, when you have a system of equation like y or x, Okay, x is equal to a1, okay, maybe theta1, so that it will be clear to you, plus a2, theta2, plus a3, theta3. So in this case here, we can say that the, 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 in here, the variables. So the variables or the, the variables the, or the independent variables in the equation, in this case here, the variables in the right-hand side of the equation, theta one, theta two, and theta three, they are never multiplied by each other, okay? But instead they're just multiplied only by constants. In this case, our constants are A1, A2, and A3. Okay, so they're never multiplied with each other, but only by constants and then sum up. So in this case, this is a linear equation. Okay, so now if we say then if that is a linear equation, what is not a linear equation? So maybe we say y is equal to a1. We'll just, you know, we'll just say something that makes it nonlinear. So for example, a1, theta1, theta2, like that multiplied plus even if we say theta two a two plus a three theta three like that, so there's already one multiplication in this case here. The system is not any more linear. This system equation is not considered linear. We are multiplying here. Okay, so in that sense, in our case here. The, the, the difficulty in going from forward to inverse kinematics is because our forward kinematics is nonlinear. So here, so we say this is our forward kinematics and why is it not linear? Where is the multiplication? Hmm? 
Where's the multiplication? Okay, for example, the, the, this one, cosine of theta one and cosine of theta one, theta two is not linear. Okay, you can express it into a polynomial form uh, where you can have, uh, where, where you can have uh, to, to, to make an estimate of the cosine function or the sine function. Okay, but in that case, if we make it in the polynomial form, then there are multiplications somewhere. Okay, so that means in this case, it is not linear. Okay, so the problem there is because when we take, when, when, when the system, okay, this one is not linear, okay? It is not an expression of what we say of variables that are only multiplied by their own coefficients and never multiplied against each other. And so in this case, this is not linear. The difficulty with nonlinear systems is getting the inverse of this. So if we say we want to get the theta, the delta theta, okay, you take, the inverse of that in order to get your x and y, then you'll have a problem. It will be a very difficult, it will be a very difficult computation. Okay, so our way of doing it is we take the derivative first of partial, okay, this is where, where we were before, partial of x, just want to emphasize again, x, y, okay is equal to the partial of f. You take the partial on each side, or each side with respect to q, where q is your theta one. Okay, let's just say theta one, theta two, so that it's clear to you. Partial with respect to theta one, theta two, in that case, okay, as a function of theta one, theta two. Okay, there you go. So now, so when we do this, we can separate them in such a way that the system now becomes a linear system of equation. This is the reason for why we do a lot of Jacobian equations in, in robotic control. So the partial of F with respect to the partial of Q, let's just say partial of Q so that it's easier against partial of Q. Okay. So now it becomes a linear system of equation. And then we, we remove the y to say x now is a vector of x and y multiplied by the Jacobian and multiplied by the vector of q1, q2. Okay, so now they become linear. So why in this case, because system, a uh, linear system of equations can also be, be written in matrix form, ax equals b. So in this case here, this is the b, and this is the A, and this is the X, okay? Those are vectors, two vectors against one matrix, okay? Where your Jacobian is a matrix and A is a matrix. So in this case, indeed, this is a linear equation. And then now it's easier now to do the inverse. So now the, to take the angles, the derivative of the angles or the partial of the angles, when your hand change, will be just multiplied by the inverse of the Jacobian, then you will be able to find the necessary joint angles for you to move the hand to the desired location. Okay? Okay, that's the major motivation on why we really need to consider Jacobian because it is the most efficient way of computing to find the inverse from the joint space or from the hand space into the joint space. Okay, from the joint space to the hand space or to the world space, the system is not linear. This is non-linear system. Okay, so we have to take the, we, we take the derivative or the partial to make it into a linear system. And then we take the inverse from there. So that, our job will be a lot easier, okay? So, any questions? 
So this is just the simplest way for you to understand so that because I don't want to go into the technicalities of the linearity of the system. So we say that as long as there's no multiplication of the variables, then your system is linear. Excuse me, the same thing as here. So now you can separate your variables into a linear system of partial of X is equal to Jacobian times partial of Q, okay? So now that is, that's how we stop. That's where we stop. We will stop here uh, in terms of, of the, the, linear, the linearity of our system that we need to have the Jacobian in order to convert the entire system into a linear system so that you can take the inverse a lot easier. Okay. Now that's that. Okay. Okay. Then uh, that's the reason for us to. So we, we go here and we, we already discussed about it. I already corrected the Jacobian where the, 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 we take the derivative of the X and the Y with respect to the independent variables theta one and theta two. So last time there was a, there was a mistake in the first term of the, of the Jacobian. It should be this X with respect to theta one. So this one with respect to theta one. So minus sine of theta one times one minus L2, I mean, L1 sine of theta one is minus L2 sine of theta one plus theta two times one, which is the derivative with theta one, theta one with respect to theta one. Okay. And then this one was correct already. This one was missing. There was a typographical error. Okay. So always remember that Jacobian is the derivative of the forward kinematics with respect to the independent variable. Okay. So we understand this. We discussed that. And so now you'll be ready to do your. Uh, inverse kinematics uh, for your lab this coming Thursday. Okay, now yeah, let's continue to, uh, to 3D position and orientation. Any questions? For the planar robot, forward and inverse kinematics. Okay, no questions. So today we're going to start with position and rotation or orientation in 3D space. This is our third lecture. All of these uh, lecture slides are already uploaded in Blackboard. So oh, the date is not changed. I thought I changed the date already. Okay, now, so in position, we are saying that when, you, when we, specify, we specify a position, there is, we specify a vector. Okay, and then when you say rotation or orientation, we specify a matrix. Okay, or of course uh, there are other methods of expressing uh, rotation. Some of the some of the met one of the other popular method is using quaternion. Okay, quaternion that means there are four components. Quad there are four, so the three axes plus the rotation around that axis. But anyway. So we don't, don't discuss quaternion here, but we discuss the rotation matrix. Uh, I prefer the rotation matrix because of the easy multiplication uh, uh, in terms of uh, transition matrices. Okay. Now, so how do we express a position in the 3D space? So please, uh, I, I want to see, bring your attention to this part, to this figure here. So there are, in this figure, there are two reference frames. So the red reference frame and the black reference frame. So this red reference frame has a center that is the origin of the red reference frame. And then origin also here of the black reference frame. Okay. So when you're talking about a position, we are only talking about the origin. Okay. We, all, we don't really consider the axis of that frame, okay? We only consider the origin of that frame. Now we, we are considering what is this point? Where is this point in the 3D space with respect to the axis? Now this is the axis that we are considering. The axis with respect to the axis of this reference frame. Okay, of course, including the origin because we define the origin. Okay? The, this frame consists of axis and the origin. So now, but then we are talking about the position of this frame. We are only talking about 
the origin of this frame with respect to the other frame. And so now it's easier to see that here we can express, this is the X component, okay? One, P2, X, okay? It's a negative in the negative direction. And here is one P2 Y component is in the positive Y direction. So here, uh, this is in the right hand rule, right hand rule meaning you're, uh, in the, in, are you familiar with the right hand rule? Okay, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And so this is the positive X, <coughs> positive X, and this side is the positive Y. And so if, we, if you use your hand, this is the X, okay? X pointing outward of your four fingers. And then you sweep, you sweep towards the Y. So now from the X, you sweep towards the Y. Y is pointing towards me, a Y. And then the Z positive is going up. So that's how you assign the, the axis of the right hand rule. Okay, normally we follow right hand rule in terms of assigning X, Y, and Z. So now this X and then Y, and then in this case, this is the component of that two, one P2, okay, one P2. Z axis, okay? So that means here we can actually rewrite 1p2, it has x, y, z component. So 1p2, x, 1p2, y, and 1p2, z axis. Okay? So now, so in, in, the, in this case, we're just saying P1, P2, P3, but uh, in, in a more formal sense, it's 1, P2, X, 1, P2, Y, and 1, P2, Z, okay? So now we say that this is the component, this is the component, this point, this is the component of this vector, this entire vector 1, P2, the component of that vector along the X, and component of this vector along the Y, and component of that vector along the Z. Okay, I think that is straightforward. We are very familiar with this vector, resolving the vector into components. Okay, so now I think that is understood. Now, so again, when we are considering the, uh, the position of one frame against another frame, we are considering the origin of that frame the position of the origin of that frame with respect to the other frame. Okay, I hope that's clear. So now, in terms of rotation, okay, I want you to understand that rotation and positions, <clears throat> rotation and position are two independent movement or two independent motion. That means you can move in terms of position only without affecting orientation, or you can move orientation only without affecting position. That means that you can also evaluate them separately. So for example, if your frame, if this frame moves in position and orientation, for example, from this frame towards that frame, you can investigate the position only, then later the orientation only. Meaning orientation only, you can put this frame anywhere in the space like that. or you can put it in this space. Uh, it should be parallel. You can put it anywhere in the space. It doesn't matter as long as you're only considering the orientation of this frame, of this red frame with respect to the black frame. Okay, so 
But then the easiest way, of course, to consider the relative rotation or the rotation of one frame against the other is to put their origins coincident with each other. And then visually, we can see how this frame rotates with respect, how the red frame rotates with respect to the black frame. Okay, so now let's consider this. Now I want to bring your attention to this figure here. Okay, so uh, instinctively, without really trying to explain much, when we say one P2, it means that P is the position vector, position vector of frame two with respect to frame one. Okay, so the reference frame is this superscript here to the right, the right superscript uh, index. So frame one. So the lower subscript, the, I mean the, the left subscript index is where the frame, the frame that is moving with respect to the reference frame. So this one is frame two with respect to frame one. So that means that the position of frame two with respect to frame one. Any questions? Okay. Is there any questions? Who's that? Okay, anyway, can you raise your hand? Is there any question? No? Okay, so let me finish this first. Now, uh, so we have this, uh, this uh, convention, the naming convention of the position, position of frame two with respect to frame one, okay? Procession vector P of frame two with respect to frame one. Now, here, the small letter says that normally you use small letter for a vector and big letters for matrix, okay? I think you have already this uh, convention in your linear systems class. That's a matrix. And then this is a vector. Okay, I just want to say that just to emphasize. So now in this case here, the rotation normally R using R capital letter because it is a matrix of frame two. Again, the moving frame with respect to frame one, the reference frame. Okay, that's our convention. So now, how do we do this? So how come there are three elements, or the, sorry, there are nine elements to express the matrix of a vector? I mean, the matrix, the rotation of a, of a, of a reference frame with respect to the other frame, okay? So let's consider first, clear all this. Okay, excuse me, because th this, uh, this matrix is expressed with respect to frame one, yeah, correct? So this is the x-axis of frame one, okay? The y-axis of frame one and the z-axis of frame one. Okay, all these terms are according or expressed or is the component along the X1 axis, the X axis of frame one. These are the components along the Y axis of frame one. And these are components along the Z axis of frame one. So what are those vectors then? Okay. This is the vector X of frame two. Y of frame two. Z of frame two. Okay. So, well, is that possible, sir? Of course. Okay, the same thing, if we take, for example, don't consider this, ignore this part. 
ignore. Okay, what do we see? Just one vector with components along the X, Y, and Z of frame one, right? Okay, this is just that vector. For example, if we assign this one as the X, as the X axis of frame two, or no, here is easier because this one we already say that this is X of frame one. Okay, let's just X of frame one, Y of frame one, and Z of frame one. Okay, now where is the X of frame two? X of frame two. Y of frame two and Z of frame two. Okay, so if we ignore if we ignore the Y two and Z two axis, so we ignore this, ignore that. Ignore. Ignore. Okay, what happened? It is just one axis, or it is just a one point. We are looking at the point of that of this point, which is the the end point of the axis x two, the position of that x point, and resolving the components of that position. So that means that it is exactly the same as this. There is that point, and we're resolving the components of this point of this point according to the x, y, and z. So the same thing. This x two is resolved into x one. So maybe it has x two going in that direction. X1 going that direction, and then that one. Okay, so there are three components. This is <clears throat> the X component. The Y component. And the Z component. You understand? Okay. So if we ignore the rest of them, we ignore this. This is just the point of one vector, the X2 vector, with respect to the components of X1, Y1, and Z1 of frame one. Okay. So now, then, then, sir, why why do we need to to do the y two and z two when we know this already? Okay, why? Why do you think we need to consider y two and z two? Why why is it not enough to just say x two, sir? X two frame, x two axis is there. We define already the rotation of that frame. Why? Do you have an answer? Well, they can rotate along the the vector that, like they can rotate along the X. So we also need to specify um, that orientation with respect to the X, like they can, I don't know, I, I can't explain. Yes, it is correct. It's correct. There are three angles. Mm -hmm. so Yes, it's correct. So when what we are really trying to say here is we need to define okay, a unique rotation. Okay? When you define X to be like that, it doesn't mean that it, the rotation is already well-defined. It is not. Because if you have your X going in that direction, the rest of the X, Y, and Z can still rotate 
they can still rotate in they can still rotate in a certain direction imagine uh, uh how it should be okay imagine i always say a pizza yeah imagine a pizza and uh, you are a, a pizza baker yeah and then you you know the pizza you always rotate like do, do you, have you seen people making pizza i mean even in youtube you know Yes, sir. Have you seen? Okay, yeah. Imagine that you are you are making a pizza and you're rotating like this, and then you have a like uh, you have a you have a what is this? A stick on top of the pizza. Okay, so now you move it like this, uh, or like, maybe not a pizza, a plate. Okay, a plate, and you're rotating the plate so that the stick will will keep standing on the plate. Okay, so you rotate the plate so that it will become uh, so that the plate will, I mean, the stick will be standing. Maybe that is physically not, not possible. Uh, or, okay, okay, imagine this. Yeah, I think I should give you a better imagination. Uh, you have a stick like this, and then you have, a, you have a plate, you know, and you imagine those magicians that are rotating the plates on top of a stick. Normally, the Chinese people, you can even do many, many sticks and they can rotate the plates, you know, at the same time, okay? So imagine that, okay? And then you have a plate rotating here, yeah? And it, this is your stick. So now, if, if, you, if you imagine an X and Y, an X and Y axis on the, on the, on the plate, you know? But then this one rotates all the time and the plate keeps on rotating. The rotation of this stick doesn't mean that the plate is already defined. The X and Y of the plate, the plate can still rotate anyway. Even if we rotate this one, the X together with the plate, the plate can rotate anywhere, but then the, the X, uh, the Y and the Z of the plate is still not defined. Is that uh, helpful? Okay. Well, maybe uh, this way. So you you keep on rotating. Okay. You keep on holding the plate. Just say holding the holding the plate with the stick. So you rotate the stick like this, and then we know already the stick rotates into a certain direction. Yeah. So now we get the components of the stick, but then uh, that rotation does not define the entire system because now the plate can still rotate here. We didn't define where is the Y and the Z of the plate. The rotate the, the plate can rotate anywhere, but still it's the same or is the same rotation as the X. It is not a when you define only the rotation of the X, it is not a unique uh, definition of the of the entire system of this plate and the stick rotation in space, because the plate can still rotate anywhere, and then the rotation of the X will still be the same. Okay, I hope that I maybe go through the recording again and, and see if that's believable. So anyway, you need one more axis. You need the axis of the Y so that we'll, we will anchor the Y or the Z somewhere. And then now the frame is already well defined. So now if we include that other information, let's just clear this one, everything. So we have our X1 here. And now, oh, sorry, that is your X2. And your Y2. So we say that your X2 is already defined. Okay, this is your X2. Expressed in terms of X1, Y1, and Z1. Okay, you express that vector with respect to those axes. Now, excuse me, you add another vector, the second column, y2, okay? y2 now is expressed with respect to x, y, and z also. So of course that one we know, okay? This is just another point here that is expressed with respect to x, y, and z of, of, the, of frame one. And so maybe we can do like that, and then do like this, do like that, 
And so this is the Z direction. And this is the, okay, that is the uh, along Y1. Okay, this X1, Y1, and Z1. And the other one is Z2. So now we are taking the components. Let's just make it different color. So along the X, so this is a component along the X because it will be extended here like that. Um, like that, like a box, right? So now this is the X component. Okay, along the X. And now the second one is the Y component along the Y1. This X1 along the X1, along the Y1, along the Y1. And then the third one is along the Z1. Okay, again, three components. <clears throat> y2 resolve into three components along X1, Y1, and Z1. Okay, so now you have these two vectors. You have four. Okay. You have four components. I mean, you have four. Okay. You, sorry, you have six. You have six components that define the rotation of two axes with respect to frame one. Okay. Now, well, sir, that, that is not that is already enough, right? Because if in that stick, if this stick rotates and then you anchor, we know already that y is in a certain direction. Okay, maybe ha, this one. Y is rotated here. The Z cannot go anywhere by itself because they're all constrained, you know? So the Z will just follow whatever it is. So yes, that's correct. This Y, X, Y, X2 and Y2 rotations are enough to define the rotation of this, of this frame, X of this frame two with respect to frame one. But why do we still include, why do we still need to include Z2? Why? Why do we still need to include this information? When X1, I mean X2 and Y2 vectors were already enough to define the rotation of frame two with respect to frame one. Anyone? Okay. Anyone? Remember this axis x1, x2, and x3. I mean x x sorry, x2, y2, and z2 are independent rotations. Okay. It can rotate, the system can rotate along z2 without rotating along Z2, X2, uh, X1, and X2. It can rotate, uh, maybe I should say it one more time. The system can rotate along Z, Z1, I mean Z1 and Z2, well, it can rotate, Z can rotate like this without rotating along Y1 and X1. And so each of those rotations are independent. And so we include Z2 here because sometimes it is not enough to this Y2, maybe there's no rotation, but actually there's a rotation in Z2. So this Y2 cannot account for the rotation in Z2. So although it is enough to say that in some cases, it is enough to say that, yes, it already have that information of this rotation because Z2 only completes the 3D you know, the orthogonal uh, axis of, of these three axes, X, X2, Y2, and Z2. But in other cases, it may not be enough because those rotations are independent of each, of each other. 
And so we need information of Z2. Z2 axis rotation. And so we need to include that. Okay. And so now you have many redundant information here in some cases. And so what I, what I told you earlier that in some cases you only use a quaternion. Okay. A quaternion, you only have four parameters. Okay. Four parameters of, okay, maybe you can say Rx, Ry, and Rz, the component of the axis, and the rotation, alpha. Okay. Now, in this case, this is the minimum number of parameters that can express rotations. So, in that case, four parameters. So, in this case, you have nine parameters. So, there are many redundant information here when you're talking about matrix computation. Okay, so if you use quaternion, then you can, you know, you can minimize the computations, but then maybe the, the mathematics of the quaternion is also quite difficult. You know, you have to, you have to do certain things that are not, you know, that, that we don't normally do in terms of matrix computations or vector computations. So, for us, for easier uh, computation, although there are many independent, I mean, there are many uh, variables that are dependent, okay? or maybe we can call them redundant variables with the, uh, with the nine variables that express the, that we express rotation, but then it's because of the ease of computation. That's why we use rotation matrices instead of quaternion. Okay? So any questions on the rotation matrix on why we, ha we have nine rotation uh, components when we take the rotation of one frame with respect to the other. Always remember that these nine components, that each component or each vector, each column is the rotation of one axis against the rest of the other axis. I mean, one axis taking the components of that axis with respect to all the uh, reference frames axis, and then that is the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis of the of the moving frame expressed with respect to the reference frame. Any questions? Oh, Haune raised his hand. Okay, Haune. Uh, so I don't understand why it's necessary to find the elements for for Z2, if we already defined the rotation with X1 and Y2. I don't understand how it moves independently, yet you can define it with the two other rotations. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of confusing for me. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, let, uh, I mean, let's, let's not just erase those notation, those uh, scribbles. Let's just go here. Okay. W what I wanted to, to say is that the rotations are independent of each other, okay? So that means that, for example, if you have here, okay, if you make this one as our reference frame, okay, you have uh, maybe they call it Z1 here, and X1, and Y1, okay? And then this one is Z2, okay? If you rotate only with respect to Z2, so we rotate with respect to Z2. So here, X1 will become here. I mean, X2 will become here because you rotate along X2. And then this one also, Y2, okay? Rotate, same angle, this, this is alpha, this is also alpha, right? Okay, so this is one rotation, okay? One rotation with respect to the Z axis. Now, if we don't account for that one, if we don't include the rotation information with respect to Z axis, we cannot, if, if this happens, This information, in this case here, the X, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in this case here, uh, you still have the you have the information of where, yeah you have the information of the component of this x two now yeah when you rotate this one okay let's say for example we don't include this information so we disregard let's just say we disregard this okay okay so now if we th this this becomes the new uh, axis yeah and so Again, we resolve this axis into here and here, okay? So you have new components. So that means that considering this one, okay, the X, this part didn't change. Right? And only this one will change and this one will change. Okay, and then this one will change and this one will change. Okay, so now, so did we, did we uh, include that information? Were we able to account for that rotation with respect to the Z axis? Given that the change um, given the change on the components of the X2 axis and the Y2 axis with respect to frame one. Uh, isn't it safe to assume that because there are no changes in R31 and R32, we can assume that there is no change in that particular direction or in that particular axis. That means it's spinning on that axis, yes. the rotation. Yes. So do we That's still true. have to compute it? We're not supposed to make that assumption. Yeah. So in this case, I think I made a bad example. In this case, it's it's still able to express. Yeah. We don't need the, the in this case, we don't need that because it remains the same. And this one, we don't need this because it remains the same. This accounts for that rotation and the Z axis. Okay. But for example, okay. Uh, but did, did you get the idea? If this was a rotation in the, in the y axis, yes. then it, it cannot account for that rotation because we ignored that. Okay. okay, but yeah, the example was bad. But it shows the principle that you know some components will remain the same and the others, the change, those changes will have to be reflected in the other axis. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, okay, it's twelve o'clock already. Let's have uh, okay. Let's have a ten minutes break, and then we'll come back at uh, twelve ten. Okay. Oh, is that at twelve ten in your time? I think my my watch is always ahead. Okay. Yes. Okay, see you later at uh, 12 10. Let me pause the recording. This meeting okay, is being back. recorded. Welcome back. Welcome back to uh, the second uh, portion of our lecture. So now let me share. We continue. Now. Uh, So we have already so, mentioned that uh, we already then express the position, okay, position in terms of the position of a frame with respect to another frame. That means the position of the origin of that frame with respect to another frame. Okay. And because of that, we express the position, the origin of that frame with respect to the other frame in terms of a position vector. Okay, so in this case, we express it as a one P two, a position of frame two with respect to frame one, and we can express that into three dimensional three components like that. Now the rotation, 
the rotation of the frame two with respect to frame one, we say can be expressed in terms of a rotation matrix. And this rotation matrix is composed of three vectors. Okay, those three vectors are the axis of frame two. And those three axes are expressed in terms of their components with respect to the other three axes of frame one. Okay, I hope that's clear. Okay, there are three axes of frame two that are expressed on the three axes of frame one. Okay, so the x axis here is expressed with, to, with respect to the x, y, and z of frame one, the y axis here of frame two expressed of, in terms of x, y, and z of frame one, and the z axis of frame two expressed in terms of x, y, and z of frame one. Okay, so that is clear. So now we only need to consider now a position vector and a rotation matrix in order to fully express the rotation and the position of any frame of, or any object in, in 3D space. Okay, we say in 3D space, but actually in, in the in the strictly speaking, it is a six dimensional space because there are three dimensions of position and three dimensions of orientation and all of them are independent of each other. Okay, so now let's continue. Okay. So we can express in this case, a vector P. A vector P can be expressed in terms of frame two or frame one. Now, physically, what does it mean? It means that, well, if we say we express frame, the position, uh, the vector P, okay? A vector P or the position of point P defined by the vector P, okay? Can be expressed with respect to this frame, X, Y, and Z frame. That means we ignore this frame. We ignore this. Okay. Or we can also ignore the other way, or we can ignore this. That means P with respect to frame two. Okay. So in this case here, it started with frame with P with respect to frame two. So now this is the case. P with respect to frame two, where frame two is com consists of axis U, V, W. Okay, this is frame two. Frame one is consists, frame one consists of axis X, Y, and Z. So let's consider frame two first. So that means P is expressed with respect to frame two. So in that case now, that means that P can be expressed. Okay, let's, you have to tilt your head a little bit because now we need to express P with respect to, for example, that is, this is the projection of P. Okay, so now if that is the case, then X can be extended here. And then Y can be extended here. And then Z Where is it? Ah, I'm Is it correct now? Z can be it should be like this. Sorry. You have to tilt your the point is not like that because it should be parallel to the Z. This is parallel to the Z. Okay, and also parallel to the what? I mean, that's V, sorry, this is W and then parallel to the Okay, and then this one is the same line. Okay, so now if you take the component, so this is component 
the Z, and then component of the of the X, and then component of the Y. Okay, so it has those three components in terms of frame two, U, V, and W. So now, so this is expressed. So that means that we can say that two P, okay, has, we'll say, for example, P with respect to U, P with respect to V, and P with respect to W, okay? It has those components with respect to frame two axis. Okay, now, how do we define P one P? Well, we can again manually compute it. Yes, we can compute it manually to say what is P X, P Y, and P Z. Well, we can by by what? By again resolving the components. Now I have to not disregard this one. Okay. Now I want to disregard the other one. I want to disregard these components here. I want to disregard that. Okay. Because they're not anymore. What I'm not interested. Oh, I have to do it one by one. I'm not interested in this axis. What I'm interested in is in another axis. Okay. So now, so when we resolve it, we extend this axis, extend that, and then extend this, and extend this. Okay. So Z axis is dropping. So Z axis just parallel to that one. It drops, drops down. And then Y, say maybe here. Okay. It has to be parallel. Okay, so it's parallel. And then this one is parallel. Okay, so the idea is that, again, you have, a diff you have different components now. Okay, when you resolve them, so this is the, uh, the Z, the PZ with respect to Z axis. My yellow is not very good. This one is, so this is PZ, this is PY, and another one, PX, okay? So as you can see, they have a different, they are, you can resolve it in, the components are different because, you know, the, the axis, are are oriented are oriented in another way. So now these are you can what what I'm trying to do to show you is that you can express this manually by taking the components about the z, x, y, and z, or you can also take the components by taking them them manually about u, v, and w axis. Okay, now, well, there's another way of doing it in terms, in, instead of manually computing, we can use the rotation matrix. Okay. So how do we do this rotation matrix? Well, we know the relationship of we, I mean, we can establish the relationship of the rotation of frame two with respect to frame one. 
we already know that. Okay, so we say that where if rotation, if this rotation matrix frame two with respect to frame one can be expressed in this rotation matrix. Okay, if we know that is based on the axis of frame two with respect to x, y, and z of frame one, okay, or in x axis of frame two with x, y, and z of frame one, y axis of frame two with respect to x, y, and z of frame one. Z axis of frame two with respect to X, Y, and Z of frame one. Now we know that. We know that there is that rotation relationship, the rotation of frame two with respect to frame one. Okay, so if we know that, and we know the position vector that is expressed with respect to frame two, we can easily just compute how is frame one expressed? How is, oh, sorry, how is vector p expressed with respect to frame one. Okay, well, we can easily just this, I call it cancellation of the, of the indices. Okay, if p is expressed with respect to frame two, and then, I mean, you know, this is our reference frame, remember? This is what we say about the reference frame and the moving frame. Last time we say there was, uh, position of frame two with respect to frame one, okay? Or in this case here, uh, a position vector that is expressed with respect to frame two, okay? So what is that position vector with respect to frame two? Well, it just says that this vector P is expressed with respect to the axis of frame two, okay? So now it is expressed with respect to frame two then you multiply it with the rotation matrix of frame two, the moving frame with respect to frame one. If you express that, you can cancel these reference frames and now you have frame one with respect to, I mean the vector P with respect to frame one. Okay. Sir, how is this vector P expressed with respect to frame one related to one P two? Frame two with respect to frame one. How is that related? Are they the same or are they not the same? This one. Is that the same as one P two? What is the difference of that? Why in this case, it's just one P like that. There's nothing here. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Okay. Well, th there's a there is a subtle difference. It's a big difference. I mean, they're totally different things. But in terms of, of the the convention, they look very similar. So the first case, the one P two case, was when when I created one frame, frame one, and you take the origin of frame two, okay, and express that origin with respect to frame one. So this is one P2, okay? But in this case here, we don't take the origin of what frame? We don't. Okay, well, arguably we can attach a frame there, it doesn't matter because we're just saying a point. Okay, we can make it frame three, finish. Now this is three and that's three there. Understand? 
So what we're, what I'm trying to say here is that originally the two two p here you can put a frame three here. That means that the, it was this frame three with respect to this frame to the red frame, and we ignore this. Question. Is that okay? I think it's okay, yeah? Okay, so I mean, to, to avoid confusion, of course, we can always attach frames anywhere so that you know we, everything will be according to the convention, okay? Okay, so I think that's clear. So now, that is what, what we are trying, that is how we express a vector expressed in one frame and then we express it to another frame, okay? So let's continue. So now we are ready to say that uh, when we have position vector, we can express it into two reference, two with respect to two reference frames, okay? So position vector here, this is a position vector where you can express it in terms of U, V, W axis, U, V, W axis, and X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z axis, excuse me. So in this case here, the, your U, U, V, W frame is coincident with your X, Y, and Z frame, okay? So this is uh, the, uh, if I were, I mean, this is uh, just, uh, I think the fastest way of saying reference frame in terms of, instead of saying frame one, frame two, they just use the, the name of the axis so that you won't get confused, okay? So frame U, V, W and frame X, Y, Z, okay? So now, but then it becomes bigger, yeah? But anyway, so in this case here, P, U, P, P, V and P, W and P, X, P, Y and P, P, Z are all equal. Do you agree? Do you agree that P, yes, U sir. is equal to P, X, P, V is equal to P, Y and P, W is equal to P, Z? Yes, sir. Yes, they're all the same because the axes are coincident. Okay, I mean, P, U, the components of U, P, U is equal to the component of P, X. The component of P, V is equal to P, Y, like that, and so on, yeah? So now, now, things will change when things move, okay? So now, if we move only, we are, all, we are going to consider only rotation on one axis, okay? So this is part of what we discussed initially. So if you rotate around the X axis alone, so what happens? So initially you have your, where was it? Okay. Your U, Your U is here and your, your V was here. Your V was here and your W was there. And then you rotate. You rotate around the X axis. So the x-axis is this one, okay? So when you rotate around there, the x and the u will not move. They're the same, they're coincident, okay? Only, so you, you rotate like that, yeah? So only this v rotates there, so v becomes there. Well, they rotate 90 degrees, yeah? In that case, 90 degrees. And then W, of course, came down here. Okay, around, 
of course, the average is deconnected. That's also 90 degrees. And so the box that was here lying here before are already, it went up. You understand? The box was, that was here. This box lying down, it went up. Lying down, it went up. There, lie down, it went up. Okay? Lie down, it went up. Okay? It went up because X moved. Question? So now, if we don't move 90 degrees, we just move an arbitrary angle, then the box will uh, not be lying, going up like that. So an arbitrary angle alpha. So an arbitrary angle alpha will be like this, okay? This is the component, I mean, the Y, I mean, the B, the X and the, the X and the U are the same. So X, this is X and the U will be coincident. So now, your V that was here before went up. And then your W that was here before goes the other way, okay? So now, what is the component? What is the rotation matrix that we can express based on this rotation about x-axis? Well, we can compute graphically. This is nice thing about uh, geometry you know you can just take according to your imagination what are the components of those vectors along certain directions okay one thing that i didn't emphasize is that these axes are unit vectors so that means the maximum value is one can be zero up to one unit vectors okay so let's consider this one now I mean, unit vectors, maximum component value is one, but the total unit is one, okay? So, okay, for example, unit vector, normally is a U like that, unit vector, its magnitude, okay, the magnitude of a unit vector is equal to one. So that means that if you take the square root of ux squared plus uy squared plus uz squared is equal to one. I mean, eh. yeah, plus uz, uz squared. This is equal to one, okay? So now here, remember we are saying that this is the, because this is X. So here we say this is U, V, and W. Okay. This is our frame two. Here is our frame one in terms of X, Y, and Z of frame one. Okay. So in this case, we need to rotate the U and the V are coincident, okay? There is no component along, this is your, this is your U, right? I said, your, your U, sorry, your U and the X are coincident. So there is no component of the U along Y and Z. So that's zero and zero. This vector u has no component lying on the y and the z. Everything is lying on the x axis. Okay, the entire length of the u is lying along the x axis, so it's one with zero, zero, no components along the y and no components along the z. Understand? That is the case when you're rotating about the u axis or about the x axis. The one that moves are only the axis along the Y and along the Z. So in this case here, the V and the W axis moves, rotates with respect to the U axis or the X axis. U and X are coincident. 
And so now what changes here now are the components of the V and the W axis only and not of the U because the U remains there along the x-axis. Okay. So what is V? Well, we can compute. <laughs> so V there, that's V. Yeah. V has no component along the X, right? Because it's flat on that screen. The V is only, uh, it has components in the Y and the Z, the same as W. And so this is zero. And so that's why this is zero and that's zero. V and W has no component along the X axis. Okay, so what is component of V along the Y axis? Well, that's alpha. So here along the Y, that's cosine. So cosine alpha and uh, along the Z, that's sine, sine of alpha, finish, just simple. Geometry, trigonometry relationship. Okay, is it positive? It's positive because this is positive Y, positive Y, and this is positive Z. Okay. The component, that component is positive and this component is positive. So positive, positive, cosine and sine. So now the W, the W there, this W. W, no component along the Z, it's fine. What is the component along the Y? This one along the Y. So this is what? Is it cosine of alpha? W cosine of alpha. W cosine of alpha is this component here along the Z. Cosine of alpha, that's positive. That is correct. The sine of alpha, this one, the opposite. Okay. Sine of alpha is this one. So this is W sine of alpha, but this is in the negative direction. Negative direction with the Y. So sine of alpha negative, finish. We're done. That's the rotation of any vector, I mean, of any frame with respect to Y and the X axis alone. Okay, so now, so with that discussion, we therefore now have for any rotation, you rotate along the y-axis alone. This is the rotation matrix. One frame rotated about the x-axis. This will be the relationship between the two frames. For example, frame two with respect to frame one. Okay. So that means we can say the rotation of frame two with respect to frame one in x-axis alone by alpha. Okay. Okay. No questions. So no questions. Let's move forward. So clear. So now, what is the the basic rotation about the y-axis? Basic rotation meaning we rotate only in one axis. Okay. The first one was a basic rotation around or about y-axis. Uh, x-axis. This one is the basic rotation about the y-axis. So y-axis alone. So where is y-axis alone? So now we know that this was u. Coincident with x. And this was w. Coincident with z. So now v remains here. So now if we rotate about, or around y, okay, by in that case the negative, okay, because uh, do, do you see this? You you point your thumb in the rotation in the axis where you rotate, 
and then go in the other direction that's positive, go in the opposite direction when you like somebody bend your hand like that, you know. So if you were Jackie Chan and you try to grip like that, and then somebody will try to open your hand like ah, 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 like this, ah. that's a, that's a, the ne <laughs> this is the opposite direction, the angle of rotation, yeah. It, it makes you feel uncomfortable. But if you can just grip here, that's the is the axis and that's a positive angle. Okay. Now, so so if this one rotates there, that's a negative angle. So now, in this case here, your V and your Y are coincident. Okay. So let's just start to mark them here. So this is your U. This is your V, and that's your W. Let's start with the easiest one first. So V, V is coincident with Y, yeah? It has no components in the X and no components in the Z axis. So no component in the X, that's zero. No component in the Z axis, that's zero. Because this is just lying down along the Y axis. And so the entire length is in the Y axis, so V, as one along the y-axis. Okay. So now let's look here. This is your uh, y, and it's coincident with your v. Okay, so now, what it let's where is your u? So this is your u. So cosine. Okay, this is positive x and positive z. Going down, of course, is negative z, and there's nothing here negative x. Okay, so now we consider u. U cosine of phi. So the rotation about this y-axis is phi. So this angle is phi and that angle is phi. You understand why the angles are the same? Yeah? They're the same? Yes, sir. Okay. Because, you know, they, you just move it. I mean, they're rigid things, yeah? You move it in just one. It just happens that, you know, they are it's uh, not just one line, but someone is attached to it. So if one moves, the other also move in the same way. Okay? But the angle, remember, is coming from here. This is the axis where it started going to here. The same thing. This is the axis where it started going to here. Okay? So that's phi and this is phi. Not, the, not this angle, but this angle and that angle. Okay? So if you have a phi here, so cosine of that, cosine of phi, so that is along the x-axis. So cosine of phi there, along the x-axis, nothing on the y-axis, no component. What is component along the z? Component along the z is downward, so that's negative. Negative sine, because this is the part, that part, the opposite angle. So sine, negative sine of phi, finish. Okay, now your W. So your W cosine. The co okay, let's start with the sine. So W sine. Uh, let's start first with the zero, the easiest one. So W has no component along the y axis, so that's zero. Okay, no question. Okay, what is component along the x axis? Along the x axis, that is sine. So the angle sine, because this opposite angle. So angle sine. So this is sine of phi. Okay. Sir, why do we don't put the W here, W sine of phi? Why do you put the W sine of phi? It should be W sine of phi, right? And here, why don't we use U cosine? Because that's a vector. It should be U cosine, U sine. Why? Why didn't do that? 
Is it because the magnitude is one? Yes, they are unit vectors, okay? When you take their components, you're just using only the magnitude, okay? The magnitude of W times sine of phi, and that magnitude is one, and so it's not there, okay? Okay, so now let's ignore that for now, okay? I, I didn't ask the question. I thought that was uh, already okay, but yes, the, the unit or the magnitude is a unit vector, magnitude one. So sine theta, so sine theta, that part there along the X and that's positive, okay? W times one, I mean, W is one times sine of theta along the positive, so that's sine of, I mean, phi, sine of phi, and then along the Z axis, it's cosine, that part, cosine of phi. Finish. Okay, so your your vector, I mean your matrix that is rotated, the basic matrix that is rotated about the y axis alone for one, for example, frame two with respect to frame one has that has those components. Okay. There are unique features here I want to show you. So if you if you rotate along the uh, about the y-axis, so uh, y will be one, and then the rest of them will be zero like that. Okay. When you rotate about the x-axis, the same thing here. The the x-axis will be one. Along the x-axis will be one. There. And then the rest of them will become zero. That's zero. Okay. Only that component has some numbers. How come I can? Okay. And the same thing. Only the component y is one, and the rest of them are zero. Okay. Now let's go to z axis. So the same thing. With that kind of understanding, we now know that Z will be one here and the rest of them will be zero. There, finish. We only worry about the rest. So this is U, V, and W. Ah, V. Okay, so you rotate about the uh, Z. So Z and W are coincident. So you rotate about there. Now, your U was here and rotate, rotated. V was here and rotated. Okay, so therefore, if we say W along the Z, so W is totally along the Z, that's one, no component in the X, no component in the Y. Okay. So now let's go to U. So U, so here U, and then we say that the Assign this as your z axis and also where your w is. Okay. So now, so if you have your u again, u has no component along the z axis, so that's zero. Finish. No component along the z axis. Okay, now what is the component? U, what is the component along the y axis? So that's U times cosine of theta. There, cosine of theta. Along the y axis, that's sine of theta. Done. What about V? V along, no component along the z axis, so that's zero. So along the x axis, x, negative x is here, negative x. So that is sine sine of theta, V sine of theta and negative there, sine of theta negative, 
And then here, the component along the Y, cosine, and it's positive cosine of theta. Finish. We're done. So we have all, with those geometric interpretations, we were able to define the relationship of the rotations between two frames, frame one and frame two, with respect to basic rotations along or around X, around Y, and around Z. So we have three basic rotation matrices that we can express any arbitrary rotations for two reference frames. Understand? Okay. I want you to, I want to leave with that uh, understanding. I don't want to give more comments because it will, it will confuse you. Okay. So for now, we have three rotation matrices. Those rotation matrices are basic rotation matrices that defines the rotation, the basic rotations with respect to, with respect to each axis of the reference frame between two reference frames, rotation of one frame against the other. Okay, so now next meeting we'll show what happens if the rotation is compound. That means not just X, but rotation about X, rotation about a combination of X and Y, Z rotation. Okay. Okay, let me stop here. Okay, any questions? Oh, time's up. Yes, yes, time is up. Yes, thank you. And I have to...